Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. Um, I've just returned from the grocery store, so I thought I'd do a little video blog um, on terms of week three of my low-fat diet, kicking off week three, what I'm buying, what I'm eating, what I'm learning about it, um, which is quite a lot at the moment. So I'm on now starting week three of the low-fat diet. Today is Sunday in Israel, so it's actually the day that the week starts here. It's like Monday in uh, normal countries, let's say. It's actually a few countries in the Middle East work like this. And this is going to be the third week I'm on the low-fat diet. So um, I got moved onto a low-fat diet after seeing a dietitian. I've had my gallbladder out for just a little bit over two years now. And I'm one of the min minority of people that have had a lot of difficulties after the surgery in terms of uh, dyspepsia, functional dyspepsia, which is a lot, not a lot of fun um, after eating things. And uh, when I saw a dietitian, she said, okay, you should go onto a low fat diet. Now, uh, so that's, that's why I'm doing it. I just have to say at the three week milestone, to say this has been a breakthrough for me would be like an understatement. This is the first thing in two years since the surgery. I've tried different medications, I've tried supplements, I've tried twisting my body in certain ways. This is the first thing that's made a really, really appreciable difference in, in a good way in reducing my symptoms. So I'm really, really excited about it. I'm feeling less bloated, I'm feeling less heavy, I'm feeling less gassy, I'm feeling less burpy, everything. Um, not 100% there yet, but it's been a big, big help. And uh, that's been massively, massively psychologically helpful because I kind of feel, okay, so there's something that can help. Uh, it's also been motivating. I was in town a few days ago looking at, uh, you know, food options and I saw falafel, shawarma, hamburgers. Uh, and then when you do that, you really appreciate how high fat a lot of junk food is. Um, so what I did, I went ahead and got myself a salad and I just kind of had this moment where I was like looking at a chip store and I was like I would love to be eating this right now but I know it's not worth the it's, I mean, it's not worth feeling disgusting and that's what happens for me is when I get these feelings of bloating which I never had before the surgery and if I ever laughed at anybody for having bloating I, I, I seek your apology because it's horrible I get bloated and then I feel mentally bad it's like this freaky connection i mean i guess it makes sense because you're you're feeling like all oh, kind of just it's not a nice feeling and that puts me in a really bad mood so it just when i kind of thought about that do i want to go there it was kind of an easy decision i did have a cheat day last night where i ate a bunch of pizza uh very very not low fat and uh, really enjoyed the pizza but yeah i felt gross afterwards so it's kind of uh i'm motivated at the moment to keep going with it so as I am on week three, I am really in the early stages of learning and I'm doing this kind of sh weekly shop on a Monday just to like grab some new things and try out some new things. Um, but I'm very much learning as I go along. Now, what I know so far is that low fat, the threshold is very low. It's 3% and 1.5% for liquids. So you don't have a lot of room to, to wiggle with there. So it's actually not that easy to find foods that are that low fat, but it definitely is possible. Uh, and it's just a case of reading a lot of nutritional labels. Now, this is technically a little bit over the low-fat threshold. So as I mentioned in the first video blog, because this is kind of a massive, massive uh, dietary change for me, I'm giving myself a bit of time just to like adapt to it. So I am looking for those kind of 0.5% cheeses, those 1% fat cheeses, but um, just to have something in the fridge. My main concern right now is not eating stuff like pizza is... I want to always always have something there that's ready to go so that I don't just get lazy and order pizza or a burger because that's going to be a lot more than 5% fat. Uh, one thing I would like to say or that I've learned is that low fat's quite deceptive. Um, things you assume would be, there's a lot of little details to figure out. I'll give you one of them I found out yesterday. Oatmeal, and that's a very common recommendation, is to have a lot of oatmeal if you're low fat. That's actually quite a high fat grain as grains go. It's about 5% fat. I never knew that. Um, look up a nutritional table. Some will be a little bit different, I'm sure, but uh, I read it last night and I checked it out. I said, that's really surprising. So, for instance, one of my things I'm doing this week is I'm learning how to cook non oat oatmeals. Well, not really oatmeals, but porridges. So, um, I'm learning how to do a bulgur porridge. I'm learning how to do 
a rice porridge. I'm watching lots of cooking videos. I'm printing lots of recipes. I'm trying basically one new thing each day uh, so that my repertoire is growing quite quickly. That's my aim. So low fat doesn't mean healthy. So here, here's the first thing on our uh, on my show and tell list for this week shopping. This is written here in Hebrew, shawarma. Shawarma is really good, um, but in terms of meat, turkey is like your best friend. The, this is basically turkey, and uh, you can see here it says it says two percent, two grams of fat per one hundred grams. So I've been spending a lot of time, as I mentioned, reading these nutritional labels, and you get a feel very quickly for what's low fat. So turkey is golden. So this kind of stuff is definitely not healthy. This kind of sliced deli meat, it's very preserved. This has a sodium warning on it. This is not healthy, not health food, but it is low fat. So again, it's something I can have in my freezer or in my fridge and I'll know that's good to go. In terms of yogurt, um, I accidentally bought this thinking it was 0% because they do have those. Uh, it's actually 3%, but still pretty low fat in terms of dairy. Now, some people, as I mentioned, do completely cut out dairy and wheat alongside low fat. I'm just trying to keep it, um, ease my way into it. Okay, another discovery this week was tuna. And I was under the mistaken assumption that tuna is a fatty fish, not the case. Tuna is actually a very lean fish, but there is a big difference in the fat content in whether you buy tuna in water or in oil. So I always bought my tuna in oil and when I looked up the nutritional label in water, I was very, very, very pleasantly surprised. You can see here, total fat per 100 grams, 0.6%. So it's really, really lean in fat. So therefore, once I discovered that uh, water preserved tuna was this low in fat, this is another golden food to have in your low fat food pantry. So I bought like, this is a four pack. I think I bought like 24 cans of tuna. Now I know with tuna there's a mercury thing, you don't want to be eating it morning, noon and night, but I figured if I went through two or three cans per week, I'd probably go through tuna, start going through tuna quite quickly. So these are all ingredients I have, low fat cheese, put that together with tuna, put that together with bulgur, and now you've got yourself a nice little salad and then find some low fat dressing. So the way I see low fat eating right now, it's like figuring out a series of alternatives, okay? So finding dressing that's low fat and the supermarket in Israel and mayonnaise, I couldn't find. There are light mayonnaises, but you look at the nutritional label and you see they're like 40, 50% fat. They're just less fatty than the conventional mayonnaise. So what I'm going to be doing this week is making my own mayo. I'm going to be making my own salad dressing uh, because off the shelf, I couldn't find any that were actually really low fat. So um, what else am I buying? So uh, quinoa is uh, a good one. And this one has um, its different fat contents listed here for if you uh, if it's dry or cooked. It says if it's cooked here, it's 1.5% fat. 1.5 grams per 100 of fat, so that's low. So again, having lots of grains on hand, quinoa, bulgur, rice, stuff like that, uh, if you are eating gluten, is I think a no-brainer for this diet. Um, Rice cakes, I really don't love, I have to be honest. Uh, I'm, I haven't made peace with rice cakes yet, but uh, they are a good thing to have. Now, one thing I'm really, really eating a lot of at the moment, and perhaps this is why I'm feeling quite good right now, is I'm eating a lot of fruit and veg. So I think that when you're going over to this low fat way of eating, it's kind of, you do have these moments where you're going out and you're looking at people eating hamburgers and hot dogs and uh, you know, uh, shawarma and falafel if you live where I do in Israel and uh, you feel very very bad or sad uh, but if you think about what you can eat it's definitely harder to find this kind of food out so last week I had salad out a couple of times we got a falafel salad in once and I also tried out a chicken salad from a hamburger place which I wasn't really that uh, blown away by so as I said I think I'm going to be doing a lot more of my own cooking uh, in this new way of eating. So big bag of cucumbers, which I've just managed to drop all over the ground, but uh, I can show you at least one cucumber. So that's another thing, uh, just eating lots of salad. I'm eating salad for, you know, three times a day at the moment, basically, which is great. And uh, just, just fruit as well. Some oranges are in my shopping bag here too, um, as well as some parsley. Tabbouleh is, is a good recipe that can be low fat. So if you've got your grain, you've got your, maybe you want to add a bit of cheese, 
a bit of bulgur and chop up lots of parsley uh, and you've got yourself some tibule. Uh Lemons are another good thing I'm buying at the moment. You want to, they're very, uh, they're a basically fat free way to quickly add some flavor to something like tabbouleh or another dish. So learning these hacks, I would say as I go along day by day, week by week, uh, but it is going really, really well and I'm feeling really, really good. And therefore it's kind of easy to motivate myself to eat like this because uh, I see the improvement and therefore I want to stick with the improvement. So basically in summary, week three, the, the things I figured out on this week, low uh, tuna stored in oil is very low fat. By the way, there is a great website that you can put in a category of food and it'll tell you, you get a ranking from zero, from, you know, from zero upwards of the fat content. I'll put a link to it. There are loads of little tools like this on the internet that are super helpful. So when I went through that, I found that cod, sorry, haddock and place are very low fat. Tuna is a low fat fish, but there are fish that are converse, conversely are just naturally fatty. And yes, it's the good kind of fat, the omega-3 fat, but if you're going low fat, then uh, based on everything I've been told, it's low fat. It doesn't matter whether it's uh, good fat or bad fat or, or trans fats or saturated fats or unsaturated fats. You're trying to reduce the fat content. And as I said, for post gallbladder post, post people, the rationale, as I understand it, is to, because you've got a smaller bile pool, you're trying to eat a diet that's going to require less bile uh, to break down what you eat. So um, that's it basically in terms of week three shopping for this diet. Um, as I mentioned, I think it's really, really going well so far. Uh, it, it, is, it does strike me as strange that low fat has become so uncool so quickly, which is partially why I'm putting these video blogs up because I just want to show people that people are still doing it, that it can be done. And I want to just kind of, I guess I'm open sourcing uh, my process of learning how to eat like this. So this is gonna be, uh, this is just the start of this week and I'm sure I'm going to be learning and trying out new things during it. Thank you guys for watching. More videos uh, coming soon.